shows off that topic. So, here's the video. Must be one of what it Hello, various internet people. I will be, over the course of a few videos, doing an English project on Pride and Prejudice. We're supposed to read a book and document our reactions from sections we read. I have a choice between writing and doing videos, and obviously I choose videos. Well, I guess I better start reading. The first section will be about a third of the book, or whatever I choose. So, about three videos for three parts. I uh, made to point out plot developments and things, things we found useful. We are supposed to see if we can relate the book to our own life somehow as we're reading it, so this should be fun. Now for tea and luck. You are dancing with the only handsome girl in the room, said Mr. Darcy, looking at the eldest Miss Bennet. Oh, she's the most beautiful creature I've ever beheld, but there's one of her sisters sitting down just behind you who's very pretty and I dare say very agreeable. Do let me ask my partner to introduce you. Which do you mean? And turning around, he looked for a moment at Elizabeth. So catching her eye, he withdrew his own and coldly said, She is tolerable, but not handsome enough to tempt me. I started reading this book a few days ago, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. It is not bad. Elizabeth is a pretty cool person. The way Mr. Darcy talks is really obnoxious, though. I can understand why she doesn't like it very much. Mr. Bingley seems like a decent guy. I don't understand why he would be friends with such a jerk. On another note, we got new seats in bio today, and guess who I'm sitting next to? This jerk who insulted me a few months ago, that's who. The, thing's, it, the thing is that he and his friends were talking, and I heard them saying really demeaning stuff about nerds and whatnot. Thankfully, we didn't have to do a lab, which meant I didn't have to acknowledge his existence. Unfortunately, I will have to do so at some point, but I won't do it willingly. I guess I do have more in common with this event than I thought I did. In vain have I struggled. It will not do. My feelings will not be repressed. You must allow me to tell you how ardently I admire and love you. Elizabeth's astonishment was beyond expression. She stared, colored, doubted, and was silent. So yeah, Mr. Darcy just proposed to Elizabeth. In other news, we had to do a lap today in bio, which meant communicating with him. Unfortunately for me, I was going to shock with the high roll post on it. To my surprise, though, instead of an insult, he told me he really liked the shirt and asked me where I got it. I think I may have been so caught off guard that I was silent for a few minutes as we worked out the second game of Rob. He asked me what my favorite game of the series was. I knew that you did see the fruit as I answered, but I was immediately brought back to the insults. So I was reading yesterday, and Elizabeth visited Pemberley, which is where Mr. Darcy lives, with her aunt and uncle as she goes on a tour of Jefferson. She is given a tour of the house by a member of the household staff, who speaks very highly of Mr. Darcy and is very shocked when Elizabeth says she knows him. While she was there, something interesting happened. As they walked across the lawn towards the river, Elizabeth turned back to look again. Her uncle and aunt stopped also. While the former was conjecturing as to the date of the building, the owner himself suddenly came forward from the road, which led behind it to the stables. They were within 20 yards of each other, and so abrupt was his appearance that it was impossible to avoid his sight. The rest instantly met, and the cheeks of each were overspread with the deepest blush. He absolutely started, and for a moment seemed immovable from surprise, but shortly recovering himself, advanced towards the party and spoke to Elizabeth, if not in terms of perfect composure, at least of perfect civility. I may have mentioned this before, but my bio class is grateful for lunch. This morning we were finishing up a lab, and we got into a friendly argument about something that was of an interest to us both. It took us the entire last five minutes of class, and up until lunch, we were talking all the way to the lunchroom, and I barely noticed. I would have sworn that he was a total jerk that made fun of anything. This reminds me of a couple passages from the book. It was not often that she could turn her eyes on Mr. Darcy himself, but whenever she did catch a glimpse, she saw an expression of general complacence, and in all that he said, she heard an accent so far removed from hotter or disdain of his companions as convinced her that the improvement of manners which she had yesterday witnessed, however temporary its, its existence might prove, 
had at least outlived one day. When she saw him thus seeking the acquaintance and courting the good opinion of people with whom any intercourse a few months ago would have been a disgrace, when she saw him thus civil, not only to herself, but to the very relations whom he had openly disdained, and recollected their last lively scene in Humphrey Parchment, the difference, the change was so great and struck so forcibly on her mind that she could hardly restrain her astonishment from being visible. Now, as a slight background before I read this second passage, um, Miss Bingley, Mr. Bingley's unmarried sister, has a crush or is in love with Mr. Darcy. So, and she also knows that he is in love with Eliza Bennet. So she's constantly trying to convince him that she's not right and trying to get him to say bad things about her. So this is her speaking. I remember when we first met her in Hertfordshire, how amazed we all were to find that she was a reputed beauty. And I particularly, particularly recollect your saying one night after they had been dining in Netherfield, she a beauty. I should assume, assume call her mother a wit. But afterwards, she seemed to improve on you, and I believe you thought her rather pretty at one time. Yes, replied Darcy, who could contain himself no longer, but that was only when I first knew her, for it was many months since I have considered her as one of the handsomest women of my acquaintance. Was I wrong? Am I wrong? Because Lizzie, Lizzie certainly was, and I think we have the same train of thought about these people. So he apologized to me today, saying that he wasn't sure if I had overheard his friends at lunch that day. I had mentioned that it happened a few months back. He asked me if that's why I had been so sharp with him when we first started talking in Bible. I really was wrong about him. Elizabeth was too much embarrassed to say a word. After a short pause, her companion added, You are too generous to trifle with me. If your feelings are still what they were last April when he proposed to her, Tell me so at once. My affections and wishes are unchanged, but word, one word from you will silence me on the subject forever. Elizabeth, feeling all the more calm and unpurchased in anxiety of this situation, now forced herself to speak, and immediately, though not very fluently, gave him to understand that her sentiments had undergone so material a change since the period to which he alluded, as to make her receive with gratitude and pleasure his present assurances. The happiness which this reply produced was such as he had probably never felt before, and he expressed himself on the occasion as sensibly and as warmly as a man violently in love can be supposed to do. Had Elizabeth been able to encounter his eye, she might have seen how well the expression of heartfelt delight diffused over his face became him. But though she could not look, she could listen, and he told her feelings which, in proving of what importance she was to him, made his affection every moment more valuable. I finished trying to this yesterday. Wow. Mr. Darcy changed so much from when Lizzie first met him and assumed he was a conceited rich boy, which he kind of was, but he wasn't as much of a jerk as she had the first impression that he was. Hey, that sounds a lot like my first thought processes with the guy from bio. I totally thought he was a jerk, and he turned out to be a very ugly guy. I was pretty wrong and very rude to him in the beginning. I regret that a bit now. I was so distracted by the way he acted once that I wrote him off the rest of the time. I learned a lot from this project, doing this project, reading this book, talking about it with you guys. I really hope that people can understand that others change and first impressions can be misleading. Thank you.
the general plot of Pride and Prejudice is Lizzie is at a dance. Um, Mr. Darcy and Mr. Bingley just move into town. Mr. Darcy um, accidentally insults Eliza Bennett while she's within hearing distance. And um, she doesn't take it seriously the rest of the book, well, most of the rest of the book. And she meets Mr. Wickham, who tells her bad stuff about Mr. Darcy, which isn't true, and that tilts her a little bit more towards, oh my god, I hate Mr. Darcy. Um, and she thinks Mr. Wickham's amazing, he's a great guy. Um, she finds out he's not actually a great guy, he's actually the jerk, and Mr. Darcy is really the nice guy. Um, so this entire book is about first impressions, and the fact that <laughs> Eliza Bennett was wrong. Absolutely and completely wrong about both people. And she learns this and she decides that she is not that good about judging people as she had originally thought she was. So we try to figure out how to display this the best. Just talking about it would not go over quite as well with you guys. Um, we were originally going to do a kind of mini movie of the person. Um, writing in a journal doing this English project, and we kind of decided that wasn't really up with the times, like just writing in a journal, reading a book at the same time, it's um, not really up with the technology age kind of thing. Um, so over, what was it, spring break? Spring break, yes, yeah. okay. I discovered the Lizzie Bennet Diaries, which is, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. And it was um, produced by, the Green Brothers, Hank and John Green. Um, Hank Green, predominantly, if anybody knows them. It's, if you don't know this one. Um, but it was done so well, and it was a vlog style of Lizzie Bennet, who is in a household um, with her parents who she can't stand, and she's doing talking about all of these people, and it brought in a kind of, it brought you into her life way more than anything else we could have done. Um, it, it brought a new kind of light to the story. Hearing it from her own mouth, just just basically her impressions. I mean, occasionally her sisters would come in and Charlotte, and her best friend, was there. But it was a lot more intimate than the BBC Prime Prejudice, um, which is just a flat out representation of the book and movie form. And it brings the listener into her life, just draws them in. So you're listening to Lizzie Bennett, and you're becoming so close with what's going on, and she's doing these like weekly vlog video diaries. Um, and I realized that what we were doing was not as intimate as we could make it, and not quite as fantastic as we could make this. So I, I made Lizzie watch Lizzie Bennett Diaries. <laughs> they're amazing. Um, I'll watch them. They are. They're really good. So um, we went with that and we spent two hours redoing our entire script to put it in, in, in this vlog form. And um, I don't know if you guys saw us. We were over there drawing on the board trying to figure out where to put everything. Um, so we have a script that has errors all over it as we move things and we cross things out and we got rid of things that we did not need in the vlog. So we wanted the vlog English project, um, English project within an English project because people wouldn't normally read a book and review it. So we had to have the student doing this for a reason. And this, this gave it a property of realism that just reading the book and reviewing it for no kind of reason probably wouldn't have, it would have been like, why are you doing this? And so we did an English project within an English project. And getting there, we had to create a persona, which wasn't actually too difficult, and figure out an insult that would be kind of not horrible enough that you would just ignore the person the entire whatever, like if they had called you. Kind of what Mr. Dunn 
not that great a person or whatever it was actually a really great person. And we wanted people to look back on things that they've assumed about people and try to figure out, am I wrong? Was I wrong? Did I misjudge them? Because that is a huge problem. There are people that you probably see from afar, across the building, you assume, you know, they're ridiculous, they're weird, they have their reasons for doing things, but I don't care about those reasons. And we want people to try to think, at least once, before they go, that person is whatever. If we do that at least once, we will have achieved the purpose of our project. Have people look over and decide if they did misjudge somebody. Because, as I probably said at least three times, we do that a lot. So, not only is this an English project, it is an English project. Two people, three people did the learning. Our character, and us. Exploring in this fact of, have we done anything that we do not believe is... Have we misjudged people? And I want you guys to leave this with the question, have I misjudged somebody? Because you can form friendships or anything else from people that you've misjudged and look back and look over whatever because you may have missed out on a friend or you missed out on an enemy and you could be completely correct about your first impression of somebody and that's perfectly okay. You can be correct about your first impression of somebody. But if you're wrong, there should be this person isn't a jerk? What if that person isn't a 